Hi guys, I hope you're well. I want to start off by just saying if you are someone who thinks the probability of the United States moving to a social credit score system is low, I think you need to open your eyes. I think you're, <laughs> to say the least, I think you've got your head buried in the sand. I have as much conviction, and I want to start off by saying, like, like I always do, you guys know, there are no certainties, there are only probabilities. But I now have the same level of conviction that we will have a social credit score here in the United States that I had back in 2019 when I started my YouTube channel about the United States moving toward the central bank digital currency. And today, to say that the U.S. is moving in that direction sounds like just mainstream news, something you could hear on CNBC or Bloomberg or uh, you know even the central planners, the IMF or the World Economic Forum. They're talking about that. You know, they're talking about a digital SDR. It's like ho hum. It's just like it, it's not even news anymore. But if you remember back to 2019, that was an incredible incredible assertion that the United States, the Fed, could actually move to a central bank digital currency. Everybody was calling me a tinfoil hatter, a conspiracy theorist, all of these people that are now, by the way, calling me a conspiracy theorist uh, to think that we could have a social credit score here. And so... Um, my point there is my level of conviction is is the same. Although there are no certainties, I think the probability is incredibly high that we move towards this social score. And it's not going to happen overnight uh, like everything else. It just happens slowly and people really don't notice the gradual steps that we're taking closer and closer and closer to this end game, if you will. So let's go over an article that talks about the IMF and what they are, or at least someone that's writing for the IMF, and what they are asserting would be just a wonderful improvement to our lives. <laughs> I just, I don't know how they can say this stuff with a straight face, honestly, but they do. Here we go. Should your web history impact your credit score? The IMF thinks so. And this was put out on August 20, 2021. A group of researchers, researchers has published a blog post at the IMF website in which they call for significant shift on how credit scores are assessed. Instead of being based on traditional metrics, the group believes banks should begin incorporating additional information, including your browser history. They talk about why the current system is, or the flaws to the current system. And then they also discuss how this new way of doing things would be so revolutionary and how great it would be because it would solve the problems that we have in the current credit score system. But, you know, some things are just as good as they can get. And what's fascinating, the older I get as a, as a person, the more it just becomes crystal clear to me that we are all imperfect humans living in an imperfect world. And yes, there's problems with our current credit score. But it doesn't necessarily mean that just because there's a problem with something that we need to change it. Because there's always going to be problems with everything. Because nothing that we do, nothing that we create is ever going to be perfect. 
It goes back to the saying from my favorite economist, Thomas Sowell. There are no solutions. There are only trade-offs. So there are no solutions to the problems we currently have with the credit score system. There are only trade-offs. So what are those trade-offs? Well, we could have it's what their point is first and foremost is that people start with zero credit history and it's kind of this catch 22 so by using browsing history that would enable people to get a credit card uh, even though they haven't had any form of credit history in the past now obviously that's not that big of a problem or else none of us would ever have a credit card because i somehow have one and I started off with the same catch 22. I would imagine that 95% of the people watching this video right now would have been in the same spot. <laughs> that they didn't have any established credit when they were young, but they did something. They went out and maybe bought some furniture or bought a car with an astronomical interest rate, or you did something to establish your credit score. And today you now have a credit card at probably not a low rate uh, because no credit card rates are low, but relatively speaking, you have a credit card at a low rate. So obviously this isn't that big of a problem, but let's just say that this new uh, incorporating browsing history into your credit score would solve that problem. What is the trade-off? So we have to do a cost benefit analysis and so few people do that today with everything especially things like the cerveza sickness and the things that are applicable to your personal freedom and liberty so obviously that's the trade off that you give up your and I don't even want to say you have any privacy because you have pretty much zero privacy. But now all of a sudden that affects your credit score. So think about this. If you're watching or if you watch a video from Alex Jones, you think that's going to help your credit score or you think that's going to hurt your credit score? How about Joe Rogan? How about George Gammon? How about the Rebel Capitalist channel? You think that's going to help your credit score? I highly doubt it. So that's the trade-off. And you get my point. That to me, and I would assume that most people that just give it a couple minutes of thought would come to the conclusion that that trade-off is not worth it. It's not worth, quote-unquote, solving the problem. So, although the current system is flawed, it is better than the more efficient system because the cost would be not only your privacy, but them being able to micromanage everything you do online. It's not even a, a pri well, it is a privacy issue, but it goes so much deeper than that. That, that let's just say that you go onto a website where uh, you're researching, uh, you know, the latest beers or, or, or something like that, and that they that the algorithm says, well, well, that people that research beer online, those people are a higher credit risk. Therefore, that affects your score. So now, what are you going to do? You're going to be like, okay, well, I'm never, ever, ever going to search for beer online. Now, I'm never, ever, ever going to watch a George Gammon video. I'm never, ever, ever going to even think about watching a Joe Rogan video. And how does that make your life better? It doesn't. It's going to make your life worse. And ironically enough, the people that push for this are going to be affected just as negatively, maybe not just as negative, but almost they're going to be affected negatively just like the people they're trying to control. It, 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 it's the way this stuff always happens. Is you give the government power 
And at some point in their time, and so, at some point in time in the future, they're going to use the power you gave them against you. It's just for whatever reason, as a society today, we just can't see that. If it completely baffles my, it, it boggles my mind. I, I just. <sighs> I know I say that on every single one of these videos, but I, I just cannot believe that the majority of Americans just can't see the downside to this. Or if they do see it, they're just nonchalant about it. Okay, so it looks like they're getting some pushback here. Okay, so this article isn't the IMF article. It's it's referencing the IMF article. Okay, so here, good. So it looks like this is at least, um, you know, they're getting both sides of the coin or the both sides of the story. And so this looks like someone, uh, this person, Kate Crawford, Wow, I'm impressed. This, this person's at Microsoft? Okay, let's read this here. This is interesting. In an interview with The Guardian earlier this summer, Microsoft AI researcher Kate Crawford had some harsh remarks for the current reality of artificial intelligence. Despite working for one of the, the leaders in the field, AI is neither artificial nor intelligent. <laughs> That's funny. It is made from natural resources, and it is people who are performing the tasks to make the system appear autonomous. Great point. When asked about specific problems of bias in AI, Crawford said, time and again, we see these system systems producing errors. Women offered less credit by credit worthiness algorithms. Black faces mislabeled. And the response has been, we just need more data. But I've tried to look at these deeper, but I've tried to look at these deeper logics of classification, and you start to see forms of discrimination, not just when systems are applied, but on how they are built and trained to see the world. Training data sets used for machine learning software that casually categorizes people into just one of two genders. Okay, so here's, yeah, okay, so I, I mean, obviously I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to probably see eye to eye with her on uh, there being a limitless number of genders, but, you know, she's got a valid point on this, and, uh, but I, I think she is pointing out some potential downside here, some trade-offs, if you will, but I don't think that she's even scratching the surface. I mean, all she's arguing is that the AI isn't going to do a great job of it. She's not even talking about the uh, the 1984 Orwellian components of what this presents and the, the power that it gives the government. And she's not even acknowledging that. All right, so now they're going on to when we've seen this uh, in movies and whatnot. So I think that's the main point here, is that I, I wanted to show you that the IMF is now talking about the benefits of what essentially is a, a type of social credit score, where it's still your credit score, but they're using all these different dynamics to determine what your score is, which again, all these social components, which although it, the name is a credit score, effectively it is the same type of social score that we'd see or that we're seeing right now in, in China. So this is the direction I think that we're moving in. And um, 
this is just one more reason why we need to really stand up for for freedom and uh, understand that 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 there are no solutions. There are only trade offs, and some of those trade offs take us to a very 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 dark place. And all you have to do is study history, and you see how close we are to that dark place right now in the United States. And I can't believe that Americans aren't looking at Australia and New South Wales, more specifically, in horror and saying to themselves, if that happened in Australia, that can happen here. And I'd like to remind everyone that Australia, they don't have an end game. There's no end game. When's the, when's the lockdown? When are they going to end? Just when the Cervasa sickness ends? You, you can't end it. It's, it's most likely going to be like the flu. So if they're locking down for safety right now, why wouldn't they lock down for safety in five years? Why wouldn't they still be locked down in 10 years, 20 years? And if you say, oh, George, that's ridiculous. Okay, well, you would have said the exact same thing back in March of 2020 when they locked down to begin with. If I would have told you that they'd still be locked down a year and a half later. So you get my point. Let's stand up for freedom, but let's also understand the prob- the high probabilities that we are going to see these social scores, or even if they're not called social scores, rolled out right here in the West. Okay, we've got Matt Silva, Michael Hoffbauer, Steve Z, Amy K, Moody the Millennial, Mo Money. Who else? Garth Bentley, Harry Hunter, Obscure, 2099, Tits McGee in the house, Jay Chan, 59, Kevin Glick, Art Kruger, Nightmare, Kayhawk, Jason Kincaid, Tom Tom, Jeans in the house, S.E., Louis Raya, Polygon, Colney, Pork Barrel Investing, Sustainable Lumber Company, Dad, the man, the myth, the legend. (laughs) All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We'll see you on the next video.